told her we were going to Mr. Henry's town. We could ride his horse. You think Tippy was fooled by that? Sure. Well, that's what we told her the last time we went fishing. Only she ended up finding us anyhow and snaggled up all our lines. Yeah, she still caught more fish than we did. Got catfish. Told you. Come on, let's hide from her. First, you gotta pay off. I don't have a nickel with me. Come on, let's go. Come on, Tramp. Come on, Tramp. <laughs> Another lad and a dog? Mm-hmm. Are you a sailor? I am. What are you doing here? Just looking around. Oh. Are they hiding down there? No, they ran away. I must have scared them. Why? Well, I didn't mean to. What's your name, little girl? Tippy, what's yours? Dennis McCarthy. I just arrived this morning from Ireland. Ireland? Hey, you must be Uncle Mac's brother. Is that what you used to call Charles, Uncle Mac? He used to tell us lots of stories about pirates and treasures and... I'm sorry. I mean that would happen. Don't you worry, Tippy. He had a full life. He told us you're a sea captain. I was, but I'm retired now. But I do miss the sea. That I'll admit. I'll bet you you know lots of stories. Oh, I know a few. Well, guess I better go find Scott and Catfish. Catfish? His real name's Wilmer. He don't like it, so we just call him Catfish. <laughs> I see. Well, they went out the front way. He's kidnapped her, that's what. Yeah, he's probably gonna hold her for ransom. Think we ought to try and save her? Yeah, I guess we better. You can come out now, it's all right. Mr. McCarthy, this is my brother Scott, and that's Catfish. I believe we've already met. Yeah, and you ran away. What do you mean, ran away? We was just, uh, yeah. I think they were just caught by surprise. They didn't expect to see anyone inside since the inn has been closed these past months. Yeah, that's it. We was just surprised, wasn't we, Catfish? Yeah. Ah, uh, you guys are just scary cats. That's what. Oh, oh yeah. 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 What's going on here, anyway? Hi, Mr. Padgett. You, uh, you must be Charlie's brother. Her Charlie left you the inn, and it will. That's correct. I'm Vern Padgett. 
I uh, lived back yonder in that little shack near the woods. I care took her this place for Charlie and I on 30 years. Him and me, we, uh, we got along fine, just fine. Well, I'm sure we'll get along fine, too. And you're welcome to stay here as long as you like. Well, now, I, uh, I didn't come here to ask any favor. Well, say what's on your mind, ma'am. I hope you don't start that foolishness all over again. What foolishness are you referring to? Looking for Lafitte's treasure. It ain't here, never was. It's just that thieving pirate's joke on all of us. Sent your brother Charlie to an early grave looking for it. The same thing could happen to you. I'll not be told what I can or cannot do in my own place. Oh. Hmm. We used to help Uncle Mac look for the pirate's treasure sometimes, only... Only what, lad? Well, I guess we never really thought there was any. Well, now, maybe you didn't look in the right place. You mean you really think there is pirate's treasure buried here? Don't you? It were John Lafitte's hideout, weren't it? And his ship lay anchored right out there just before his last voyage, loaded with jewels and gold doubloons. Yeah, but Uncle Mac never found anything. Oh, but he did. And he wrote me that I could trust you. Can I? You bet. All right, then. Tomorrow, after I've unpacked and settled in, you come back here, and I'll show you something interesting. Golly! Wow! Only it's a secret, so don't let on to a living soul. We won't. Not me. Good. I'll see you in the morning. Yes, sir. I wonder what it's going to show us. Maybe it's a map. Shh, you want someone to hear you? Yeah, from now on, we've got to be careful. Real careful. Race home! Watermelon. Use your fork, please, Scott. Oh, gee, Mom. Nobody eats watermelon with a fork. Well, you do. I don't want you dripping all over the new tablecloth. What'd you kids do for excitement today? Nothing much. Sure we did. Don't you remember? Tippy. Oh, yeah, it's a secret. Tippy, for gosh sakes. I didn't say anything, did I? No, you didn't say anything. We didn't know already. Would somebody mind telling me what's going on? Well, I rather imagine they were over at the old Pirate Inn today and saw Mr. McCarthy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he came by to pick up the house keys. He's from Ireland. What's he like? I don't know. I was out for coffee when he came in. But I got to take some papers over there in the morning for him to sign. Hope he's not as strange as his brother. Uncle Mac wasn't strange. He was nice. Anybody who would live in that inn for 30 years has got to be strange. Gives me the creeps every time I go by it. I don't know if it's such a good place for the kids to play around, Jim. Oh, Mom. Oh, I don't know, Peg. I used to play around there when I was a kid, looking for gold or ghosts or whatever. Ghosts? I never heard anything about ghosts. Why, sure. Oh, John Lafitte used to come over there every night covered in blood and seaweed and rattling his chains and saying, who's going to do the dishers? Ah, oh, Dad. Can we go with you tomorrow? What do you think? On one condition. I get a split of the take, lads. That's right, indeed. Indeed we do. How do you do? These two are mine. I hope they won't be pestering you too much. Not at all. I invited them to come over this morning. Oh, won't you come inside, Mr. Durden? Oh, thanks, Mr. McCarthy, but i got to be getting back to the office in a few minutes. Look, I brought some papers over for you to sign. You can drop them by the office at any time. Thank you. That's a great old place, isn't it? Got any plans for it? 
Not as yet. Uh, Dad, you don't want to be late for work. Yeah, I heard you tell Mom you had an appointment. You know, I have an idea that you two are trying to get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta be running along. Nice to meet you, Mr. McCarthy. Nice to meet you. Come again, Mr. Durden. Now, you kids behave here. Remember, your mother's expecting you home for lunch. Yesterday, I had something special to show you, but you must all solemnly pledge that it's to be a secret just between us. To be? I will. Then all you have to say is I. I. Then sworn you are. Now, this arrived from me in Dublin shortly before my brother Charles passed on. In the letter that came with it, he said he found this tin box hidden in the wine cellar a few days after he was took ill. October 21st, 1821. The pride this day shall hoist anchor and set sail to meet the Spanish galleon, the Santa Teresa, laying in the waters off Barbados Island and bearing a cargo of gold richer than man's wildest dreams. It is upon the order of our captain, the noble Jean Lafitte, that should our journey fail and we not return, the treasure we leave behind shall one day be found by those of craft and wit. It is signed, Billy Brand, first mate. And there really is a treasure buried here, and we never believed it. Can we help? Can we help you look for it? Please, please, please. please, please. Yeah. Just a moment. There's more. This is written at the bottom. The rook went aloft to seek out the chest, then took to the sea to feather his nest. What's that supposed to mean? It's a poem. Oh, it is a riddle, lad. That's supposed to tell where the treasure is? Yes, if we can decipher it. You mean you're really going to let us help you look for it? That's right. I'm not a young man anymore. And I'll be needing strong legs and good eyes if I'm to find it, and those I can trust. What do we have to do? Well, put our heads together and try to solve the riddle. Now, we'll start with the first line. The rook went aloft to seek out the chest. What's a rook? Well, it's a chess man, for one thing. Then he must have been looking for the treasure, too. Who? That chess man? No, chess is a game, lad. They're not real men. Oh. Maybe Rook means something else. Perhaps you're right, lass. Suppose we look in the dictionary. Ah, here we are. Rook. 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 Ah, yes. Rook. An European corvine bird about the size and color of the American crow. There's lots of crows over at Mr. Henry's cornfield. What's that got to do with it? Well, maybe the treasure's buried there. I hardly think so, lad. The rook went aloft. The only place aloft here would be up in the attic. Are, are we going to go up there? Yes, but we'll have to have a light. For this. We can still look, can't we? If you wish. Can I open it? All right. Some treasure. <laughs> Guess I better leave it open so I can get out. How you expect it got in without a hole? <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, we must look very, very carefully. We don't want to miss a thing.
fell off means somewhere else. Yeah, but where? Maybe it's on the roof. Catfish, you're really dumb sometimes. For a moment, I fear we've reached an impasse. That's just what I was going to say. I bet you don't even know what an impasse is. I do, too. What? Well, it's like when you go fishing, but you don't get any bites. Is that right, Mr. McCarthy? It's <laughs> something like that. Nah, you was just kissing. We ought to get home for lunch, Scott. We promised. But we'll be back to the week. Very well. Come on, Tramp. We'll have another try at the riddle this afternoon. Tramp! Come on. Oh, where did I put that tin box? It's right there. It's gone. What? Oh, yes, now I remember. I must have taken it up to the attic with me. I, I probably left it up there. Uh, you'd better be on your way. Come on, Now, I'll see you all later. Yes, sir. But, Scott, catfish, come on. Bye, Mr. McCarthy. Bye. But he didn't take it to the attic. That's what I was going to tell you. You mean somebody took it? Stole it. Gee, but who? I don't know. Hey, bet you it was him. Yeah, Mr. Padgett. You shouldn't accuse anybody unless you know. Oh, yeah? Who else could have stolen? Mrs. Durden? Yeah. I'm uh, Carl Buchanan. I'm with the Baton Rouge Chronicle. A reporter? That's right. Are your children at home? Yes. I was wondering if I might speak with them for a few minutes. What did you want to talk to them about, Mr. Buchanan? Well, I was hoping that they might provide some information on a series of articles that I'm doing uh, on the old Seafarer's Inn. I don't understand. How could they be of help to you? Well, I saw them over there yesterday afternoon talking to Mr. McCarthy, and I took the liberty of inquiring in town as to who they were, and they gave me your address. I see. Please, come in. Oh, they're in the kitchen eating lunch. I'll call them. Well, that won't be necessary. If it's all right with you, I'll talk to them while they're eating. Of course. Scott, Tippy, this is Mr. Buchanan. He's Hi. a newspaper reporter Hi. from the Baton Rouge Chronicle. A reporter? Gee. He'd like to talk to you and Tippy. About what? He'll explain. Can I fix you a, a sandwich or something, Mr. Buchanan? No, thank you, ma'am. Coffee? No. Sit down. Sit down. I saw you two over at the old inn yesterday afternoon. You did? I used to know uh, Mr. McCarthy's brother before he passed on. We talked a lot about some stories that I was going to write for my paper about the old inn and about the 30 years that he spent looking for treasure that was supposed to be buried there. You have heard about it. Yes, sir. Well, since you two seem to have become friends of Mr. McCarthy, I was wondering if he intended to continue looking for the treasure. I uh, still would like to write my stories. Yeah, we're going to look We for don't know anything. Well, he, uh, he didn't say anything about it to you? No, sir. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to look for my stories elsewhere, Mrs. Durden. I'm sorry the children weren't of help to you, Mr. Buchanan. Well, that's, that's all right. Uh, I guess I'd better be getting along. Goodbye, kids, and thanks a lot anyway. You're welcome. I'll show you to the door. You know how to keep a secret. Well... Yeah, and he was asking a lot of questions if you were going to keep looking for the treasure. But we told him we didn't know anything about it. Very good. Buchanan also called me this morning, asking a lot of questions. We can't afford to let anyone know what we're doing here, especially a newspaper man. Do you understand? Yes, yes sir. sir. We understand. You know, I've been thinking about that room. How's it go again? The rook went aloft to seek out the chest, then took to the sea to feather his nest. Yeah, that's it. I figure it's got something to do with chickens. Chickens? Yeah, because they have feathers and they lay eggs in the nest. <laughs> lay eggs in the nest? Boy, you got any better idea? Well, any idea is better than that. All right, now, 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 you. now, lad, now. That's enough now. Why didn't he leave us a map instead of an old riddle? Yeah, don't saw nothing like a real pirate would do. Oh, he was real all right. Lafitte was one of the best pirates of his day. 
Sunk over half a dozen ships, he did. And murdered many a good man in the doing. He was almost as well known as Blackbeard himself. And fear, too. Mr. McCarthy, I think I know what it is. Honest. Go on, lass. A crow went to Feather's nest. Couldn't that mean a crow's nest like in that boat up there? Of course. And me, a man of the sea. But well, let's have a look. How can there be pirates treasure in that little old boat? Treasure don't have to be gold. Maybe it's just jewel. Never thought of that. For now, lads, we'll soon see whether or not Tippy is right. Another riddle. Aww. Well, we can't expect our job to be too easy, lads. If you'll remember the instructions, the treasure will only be found by those of craft and wit. Yes, sir. I'll get to the reading of it. The flame that glows stirs the souls of men. Lights not where we go, but where we've been. That riddle's harder than the other one. Which means we'll have to work harder in the solving of it. Now then, flame that glows. Crap's a good hunting dog. He only does that when he's on the scent. Or when he's scared. There's nothing to be scared of, Tramp. Sheriff Wiley, if you please. Oh, 
know she wouldn't do that. Nobody down here? That's impossible. You're not a see for yourself? He couldn't have gotten out. He, he has to be here. Look, are you sure you saw somebody? I'm not one given to hallucinations. We saw somebody all right. Heard him too. He broke the light bulb, didn't he? Well, now, this old inn is very, uh, old. You see, now, look, the, the light cord is, is still wet. Water probably ran down the cord into the connection. When you turned it on, it went pop. I've seen that happen. Kitchen door, the, uh, wind probably blew that open. What about the footprints? Yeah. What footprints? Now, that's the only explanation. No window down here, no way to get out. The walls are solid stone. I still see I saw somebody. Anyway, what about the tin box, Yes. Sorry to have troubled you, Sheriff. Oh, no trouble at all. Not the first time I was called out here on a false alarm. People always seeing lights, hearing noises in these old places. These places get a regular reputation, you know. Old stories about pirates, ghosts, and all that stuff. Actually, it's probably just rats in the walls. Well, thank you for your trouble. Oh, it's my job. Anytime you have a problem, Jim, just look. call. Hold it! Stop, stop, or I'll fire! Come on, there, I'll shoot! Come on up! I hope you don't plan to pull that trigger, Sheriff. Who are you? What are you doing hanging around here? If you wouldn't mind putting that gun away, I'll explain. Hey, it's Mr. Buchanan! You know this man? Yes, sir. He's a reporter. Hey, you must be the man who telephoned this morning. Yes, I am. Well, I told you before, and I'll tell you again, there's no story here for your newspaper. Well, I happen to think that there is a story here, Sheriff, and you can't blame a man for trying to do his job. You didn't happen to be inside the inn a little bit ago, did you, Mr. Buchanan? Well, as a matter of fact, I just got here. You walked here all the way from town? Well, it's not far. It's good exercise for a man who spends most of his time behind a desk. But if you walked out here, you ought to have been caught in that thunder shower. Well, if you're wondering about my clothes being dry, there happens to be an old abandoned farmhouse just up the lane. I ducked in there until the rain stopped. Uh, that'd be the old Roggins place. Well, if I was you, I'd stay away from here. All this land is posted, and uh, if Mr. McCarthy had a mind to, he could have you arrested for trespassing. Come on, I'll give you a lift back to town. Thank you. I think we've had enough excitement for one day. You think he was telling the truth? I don't know, lass. Bitch, he's no reporter. Why not? Well, where's his camera? That's a photographer. Oh. Well, where's his pencils? Catfish, really. 
I suppose you believe him. I didn't say that. Uh, now, now, children, let's not quarrel amongst ourselves. After all, we must work together if we're going to succeed. Better call it a day now and give our minds a rest. Mine's not tired. That's because it never woke up. What about the riddle? Uh, we'll work on it tomorrow. If we all sleep on it, maybe the answer will come to one of us. We gotta sleep together? No. We, we think about it overnight. The subconscious lad. Uh, sometimes that has a way of solving the problems for us. Oh, yeah. Uh, you go on home before your folks get to worrying about you. Uh, I'll see you all the first thing in the morning. Just don't make sense. What don't? Well, somebody was down in that cellar. I heard him. Yeah, me too. Could be rat, like the sheriff said. Rats don't make footprints like that, do they? No, that's true. And I don't think water would make the light bulb go out like that either. Bet you it's Mr. Buchanan. I don't see how, unless he can walk through walls. Maybe there's a secret passage. Yeah, I bet we can find it too. Yeah, if we do, maybe it'll lead us to the treasure. Let's go look. Of course, if there is a secret passage, maybe somebody's still hiding down there. That's true, too. Maybe we ought to come back tomorrow. Catfish, if someone's hiding down there, Mr. McCarthy could be in trouble. I think we ought to tell him. To be, wait a minute, look. I mean, if we don't find anything, he'll just think we're stupid or something. That's true. What is? What he said. Now, we've got to be careful about this. I'll tell you what. We'll just take a quick look and investigate the facts. Yeah, scientifically. Okay, Sherlock. Well, come on, it was your idea. It was? You're not afraid, are you? Of course not. I was just thinking what I was going to do if somebody was down there. What's that? Run. They're yours. Oh, yeah. Dummy. There's any secret passage either. Must have been rats, like the sheriff said. That's not rats. Must be Mr. McCarthy. I sure hope so. Let's go home. <laughs> 
I'm getting hungry. Me too. Wait a minute. I still say water didn't make that light pop. Who cares? We gotta find out. That's what we're here for, isn't it? Well, how are we gonna do that? Spearmint, come here. Give me a hand. Get the kerosene. Who's down there? You better show yourself, ma'am. It's only us, Mr. McCarthy. All right. Come up. Come up. Now, what were you doing down there? We thought the man was still hiding down there. Yeah, we didn't want him to hurt you. We were looking for a secret passage, only we didn't find one. So we were experimenting with the light bulb to see if it would explode if water got on it. And it did, too. Well, you could have hurt yourselves. From now on, when you're playing detective, we'll do it together. Do you understand? Yes, yes sir. All right, then. Now you get on home. Tramp! He's still down the sewer. I did like the dark. I still don't see all that prowler got out. Me either. You know, I've been thinking about that, Mr. Buchanan. There's something suspicious about him. I bet he's just pretending to be a reporter. Why? So we can steal the treasure when we find it. I bet you it was him down the cellar. You mean you think he's a crook? Sure, why not? Uh, that's what you said about Mr. Padgett. Maybe we ought to investigate him. How? Well, he's got to be staying someplace in town, don't he? And when he plays with Mrs. Toomey's sporting house, we can go there after supper tonight. Maybe find some clues. Yeah! Not you. Girls don't investigate crooks. Besides, it's too dangerous. Not in. How do you know it's his room? I saw him go out earlier. Come on. Wait a minute. We can get in a lot of trouble, you know. Do you want to investigate him or not? Wind is too high. Climb up the pipe. Well, come on. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, Sam. Well, I, uh, have a hard time talking to the old man. He's got a bunch of kids around him all the time. Well, I'm doing the best I can. If I could just get rid of those kids, I, I'd get the ball rolling. <laughs> Uh, uh, hold on a second, will you? Uh, I'm sorry, Sam. Look, if I come up with anything, I'll have the lead article on your desk first of the week, all right? Yeah, that's right. Well, since I'm gonna have to be here for a few days, I might as well get in some hunting. <laughs> Same to you. I'll keep in touch. I thought I told you to stay home. Did you hear what he said? Said he was gonna get us out of the way. He's probably gonna murder us with that gun. Did you see the bullets? We better tell Sheriff Wiley. You know it. up all three of you, sneak into a man's room that way. That's against the law, and you know it. You see what I tell you. But, Sheriff, what about what he said? The way I look at it, what he said don't hardly mean a thing. He had a big gun, too. No law in this state says a man can't own a gun. Now, if I were you kids, I would hightail it for home, but quick. But, Sheriff... Unless you want me to call your folks and tell them what you've been up to. Wiley? We're gone. When? I'll be right there. Something wrong? There's been a shooting. Out at the inn. A shooting? Oh, no. Mr. McCarthy? Can we come with you? No. Please? No. But he's our friend. Sheriff, please. I told you kids to go home. We'll go home later. Honest. You can drop us off. It's on the way. It's our fault if he's been shot. Please, we'll stay out of the way. All right. Get in, but hurry. Put on your seatbelt back there. Hurry it up. How'd I know you weren't a prowler? You could have looked, man. Or maybe you did. Now, what's that supposed to mean? You almost killed me. That's what it means. Now, now, now. Just settle down, both of you. There's been no harm done. How long you had this gun? I got it last summer. I told you then there were prowlers around here, but you wouldn't do anything about it. Prowlers? You know, there have been mighty peculiar things going on around here since your brother died. I wouldn't argue that. The question is, who's the peculiar one? I bet you you were the one down the cellar, too. And it was probably you. I haven't been in that place since you came here. Mr. Padgett, nobody says you have. Now, we have been through all this, and you kids promised to be quiet. Yes, sir. Here, just be careful what you shoot You're at. not going to give him that weapon back. It's his. That's the most dangerous thing now, I've look, ever heard. It is getting late. We could all use some sleep. Now, come on, you three. I'll take you home. Sheriff, what? What? Wait look, a minute. I will here. stop by tomorrow. We can talk about it some more if you want. All right, good. Thank you. You didn't really think it was an accident. In a word, yes. You did. You too. You'd better watch Mr. Padgett. Don't worry, I will.
one, maybe. No, I'll meet you as soon as I finish. Come on, throw it! Can't you throw it any harder? What a show-off. Throw it with a high heart. You and the high, hard one. Gee, went right through, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Gee, I'm sorry, Mr. Wiley. Well, you ought to be. Don't worry, we'll pay for it, honest. You bet your life you'll pay for it. I don't know how I'm going to get the city council to pay for a thing like this. All my years of driving around this town and I never... How's the case coming? What case? The shooting out at the old inn. You been checking on Mr. Padgett? You want us to help? No, I do not want you to help because there is no case. Now you just stay away from me and stay away from that old inn. A and stay away from my car.
Yes, that's right. What'd you say? Shh. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you. We was wrong. Mr. Buchanan does work there. I heard the man say he was on assignment right here in Caliu Bay. Ah, morning, Sheriff. Mr. Buchanan. Oh, thank you. Mr. Toomey said you were up and gone long before daylight. I tried my luck at fishing over at the cove. Want to see me about something, Sheriff? Well, maybe I was just a mite curious about what you're still doing here in Calio Bay. Well, it's just like I told you, I'm after a story. After shooting last night, I'm convinced there's a good one, too, just waiting to be uncovered. You sure a story's all you're after here, Mr. Buchanan? Quite sure. Why? Well, I mean, you have other interests. You, uh, fishing gear, hunting rifles. Here you bought some new shells at the store, too. Well, it's a nice, quiet little town. I thought I'd relax a little while I was here. Yes, it is a quiet town. And I mean to keep it that way. Look, Sheriff, now let's lay it on the line. I'm here for a story. I'm not doing anything illegal, and I don't intend to. So get off my back, will you? Just routine questioning. If you want references, just check with my editor at Baton Rouge. I've already done that, Mr. Buchanan. Good day to you. What's she doing anyhow? Looks like she's picking flowers. Picking flowers? <laughs> What do you want? 
I thought I made it clear I don't want no kids coming around here. Uh, can you tell me what time it is? Time? Now, what's a young one like you care about what time it is? I was just wondering. Hmm. Well, it's, uh, 11.30. Thank you. Uh. Mr. Padgett, I brought you a present from me to you. I don't want no present. But you gotta take it if it's a present. Well, uh, I guess if you, if you put it that way, here anyway, huh? We just... Now, come on. What do you think you'd find? Tell me. Be honest, Mr. Padgett. Now, listen. You come back here again, and I'll put a hickory to you. You understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Now, you get out of here, and don't you ever come back. Now, go. Get out of here. Yeah, everything's okay now, but you could have gotten me killed. One trans fault. He was just trying to help. Yeah, well, Mr. Padgett didn't almost shake your teeth out. Mr. Padgett won't hurt nobody, not on purpose. Oh, yeah? Bet you didn't see the tin box. That's because he didn't take it. That's why. All we did was get him mad at us. the souls of men. Light's not where we go, but where we've been. What about a flashlight? A flashlight? How can a flashlight light backwards? If you hold it behind you, it can. Flashlights weren't even invented when the riddle was made up. Yeah. Well, what else can light where you've already been? That's it. You've given me the answer, lad. But I say. Do you know what this kind of a lantern is called? No. A poop lantern. Aye, it's used for lighting the after deck of a sailing ship. You see, it doesn't light where a ship is going. But where it's already been, just like I said. In a sense, lad. Now, if we can find something here. Sure. Trim, come on, get up. Hey, look it! You 
found something, lad? It's a hand or something. Catfish, help me. Here, hold this, lass. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back now. It's a trap door. Golly. Looks like a room. Sure smells. Let's take a look. We gonna go down there? I'll go first. Stay close behind now. Come on, Tramp. Come on. Okay, you stay here. Keep guard in case anybody comes. your last clue and the devil to you given under my hand this 21st day of October 1821 Jean Lafitte gee he wrote it himself what are all them holes Polly Moss they don't make round holes like that oh there's something written here at the bottom this could be the clue Genesis 40 what's that mean Genesis is a book of the Bible. Forty is the chapter. There are books over there. Let's see if there's a Bible. Upstairs, where we can look it over more carefully. You see anything yet? Boy, this sure is hard. What is? Thinking. What you doing now? Trying out a hunch. Look, letters. Where? There. See? In the little holes. Lad, fetch me some paper and a pencil from the desk. I don't get it. You would. Somewhere to it. Oh, write these letters. You figured out? Maybe. I'm going to try reversing the, the order. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right. L A S T C A S K I. Oh, no, that's one, zero. And one and zero make ten. A C E S F R O M X. Firm, that's firm. We've done it. Yay! Yay! What did we do? We broke the code. We did. What's it say? Last cask, ten paces from X. Last cask. What's a cask? Well, it's uh, the same as a barrel. 
They're both down in the cellar. See anything? No. Bits of the treasures in here. Well, it's the last barrel, ain't it? Yeah. Then where's the X? And we didn't march ten paces either. Perhaps there's a way of opening it. That's it. The X. Now, all they have to do is march off ten paces. One, two, three, four. I think it's that way. One, two, three, four. That doesn't seem as if there's any way to march off ten paces. Well, that's what it said we have to do. I know, lass. Maybe there's something we can't see. Take a look, lad. Roger. Roger. Well, that's what you're supposed to say. Don't see nothing yet. Just a minute, lad. I have something to say to all of you. Now, there may be a rich treasure here, but we can't be sure. And I don't want you to be disappointed in case we don't find it. Mr. Paget might be right. This could be just a pirate's joke on all of us. Well, shall we get on with it? Yes, yes, sir. Now, since a grown man paced it off originally, I'd best be the one to march it off. You see, we are about... Two and a half paces from the X. So, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't see anything. Neither do I. Well, it wouldn't be sitting out in the open. <coughs> we'll have to look around very carefully. Figured out all those riddles and everything. Well, don't give up. Not just yet. 
Get your light. I think I've found something. Hold it up high there. Oh, good. Chest. We did it! We found the treasure! I can see it! We'll have to break away a little more of this. There. Now, lad, if you'll give me a hand to get it out. I'd advise you to... I have every intention of taking it, old man. I've been searching for it ever since your brother died. Then it was you Paget saw prowling around when the inn was empty. See, I told you Mr. Paget was all right. I thought you only wanted to write a story. I did at first. I didn't really believe there was any treasure buried here. Not until your brother found that tin box. He told you about that? No. <laughs> Oh, he clammed up real good when he found it. He wouldn't even answer my phone calls. And that got me to wondering, because he was always pretty talkative before. So I came out here one night, and I saw him with a box. And then I knew I had something bigger than just a story. And after he died, I came back looking for it. But I guess he'd already sent it to you in Ireland. So I started searching anyway. I had to run to the place until you showed up. How did you find out about the secret passages? My brother never knew about them. That's right. Not in all the years that he lived here. But he wasn't very smart, was he? If you think for one minute I'm going to stand still while you make off with the treasure... No, I don't imagine you would stand still for it. But if I were you, I'd think about them. You wouldn't harm the children. I don't aim to harm them. Not unless you try something foolish. And I'm going to take one of them with me, so I can get out of here. Now, you get over here. I, I can't. What? I just remember I got a violin lesson over at Professor Willoughby's. Well, you're going to miss it. Now, get over here. The rest of you stand back. Let's do as he says. I'm warning you, if any harm comes to the lad... You're in no position to warn anybody, old man. Now, pick up that in. Let's go. What are you doing here? Gosh, 
I saw that newspaper fella hanging around out back and come down here to tell you about it. Got hit over the head. Well, come on. We well, gotta try to stop the children. Wait a minute. We better get my gun. It's up in the shack. All right. And I'll call the sheriff, too. Yeah. <laughs> gonna do? I don't know yet. What we gotta have is a plan. Yeah, you got any? No, do you? No. But we just gotta figure some way to stop them. Hey, if he's going to the cove in that boat, he's gotta go by Hampton's Bridge. Why? Well, he's gotta go around. We can cut straight through the woods and get there first. What do we do when we get there? We'll figure out something. Come on. Come on, Tramp. Get in. What for? You don't need me now. I'll tell you when you can go. Now sit up front. What are you going to do with me? Just shut up and sit down. Did I tell you about my violin lesson? I guess I did. This way.
Well, I'll be... Stop the boat! It's getting away with the treasure! How are we going to stop it? That was mighty fine shooting, Mr. Padgett. <laughs> Help me, Jimmy. Come on. All right, hold it there. Don't move till I tell you to. Unless you want to get two barrels full. We're sorry for not coming back when you told us to, but we just had to try and stop him from getting away with the treasure. Well, I can't say as I approve of your disobeying, but... It appears everything has turned out well. Why'd you have to jump off the boat? Well, he might have got away. I was just going to try and capture him. Sure. Mr. Padgett, as long as he brought the chest out here, why don't we ask him to carry it back? You heard him. Move. Come on. Well, I never would have believed it. No, sir. Always thought that was just a legend. Looks like you ought to be congratulated. I never could have found it without the children. Or Mr. Padgett, too, of course. I, uh, I reckon I owe you an apology. It's, it's just that, well, I saw your brother waste half his life away, looking and digging and never finding anything. Well, it got so... It was sad, just, just watching him. I can understand your feelings. How much you figure all this stuff is worth? I couldn't even make a guess, lad. Bet it's worth a million dollars. Oh, I doubt that much, but it is considerable. What are you going to do with it? That I have given some thought to. I'm going to have the inn restored, make it over into a museum in memory of my brother. As to my partners, I'm going to set up a trust fund for each one of you so that you'll get a good college education. He you don't have to do that. that. Uh, you've earned it, all of you. Uh, Mr. Padgett, I'm going to see that you get a share, too. And you're still welcome to stay on here for as long as you like. Thanks. You know, that's the second nicest present I've been given today. <laughs> well, it turned out to be quite the story. Too bad you won't be around to write it, Mr. Buchanan. Come oh, on. just a minute, Sheriff. You never answered my question, Mr. Buchanan. How is it you found the tunnel and the secret passages when nobody else ever found them all those years? You don't have to answer him. I told you all about your rights. No, it doesn't matter. A couple of years ago, I wrote a story about how they used these inns to hide slaves during the Civil War. I knew there were a lot of old caves up and down the river, and I figured there might be one near your place. Took six months of searching. Every weekend I could get, I finally found it. It was all caved in. It took me two more months to dig through, and that's when I found the tunnel and the passageways. I worked hard for that gold, mister. So did my brother, mister. Well, you're due for a nice long rest, about 10 years, I'd say. We better be getting home. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, Mr. McCarthy, and we'll come and see you again soon. Goodbye, lass. Bye, Mr. Padgett.
And they went as they came, laughing, to gladden an old man's heart. Shakespeare? No, <laughs> no, tis myself. Oh, I can see that you and I are going to get along famously, Mr. Paget. Come on. I'll fix your little coffee. Irish coffee. <laughs> <laughs>